until one day this week. No, I, I don't know. Anyway, today's, I'm actually filming this on Sunday. Thank you so much for tuning in to Carol Savy Sauce. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to click on the bell to be reminded of each and every video I upload. I used to take one day out of the week, you guys, one or two days out of the week to just film everything. So if I look the same, trust and believe that I did not wake up uh, one day and just decided on Monday I was going to wear the same thing. And then on Tuesday I was going to wear the same thing. And then on Wednesday or Thursday, it just means that I film more than one video, sometimes three and four videos in one day. So I haven't done one of these in a very long time, but these, this particular video is a video about um, really very ironic and crazy, out of the ordinary, freakish, weird news stories, okay? Yeah, it would take me, I think uh, one time before, <laughs> one of the funniest stories that I actually had was uh, where um, there was a, I guess you could call it like a juke joint or a little a bootsy club, you know, or a neighborhood club where they were actually taking um, food stamps for live dances. And you actually could go in there and instead of buying, um, paying for your drinks, you could pay for your drinks with a food stamp card um, and not necessarily cash food stamp. You could use food stamps, okay? Um, there were, they were allowing the ladies who dance, because I guess this is like a little juke joint, like I said, you know, where people, women dance, they were allowing uh, guys to get lap dances and uh, they paid with food stamps. So I come to you guys with some really, really, really weird news. Um, sometimes, um, hopefully, the hope is that you haven't heard it before. This particular one that I have today, I don't know if I have been under a rock, excuse me y'all, I don't know if I've been under a rock or what has really, really uh, went on, but from what I can understand, and I live in California, this is what baffles me beyond belief. Um, six days ago, uh, there was a fight at Disneyland. Y'all, what in the name of the Lord is going on? We have a children's amusement park. Granted, there are a lot of adults that go, but for the most part, people take their children to Disneyland um, for birthdays. They take their children to Disneyland in the summertime, in the springtime, on vacation. Well, six days ago. probably on Sunday or Monday of last week, there was an African-American family that was visiting to the park. Um, what I'm going to try to do is I am going to try, and I'm quite sure that I can, close pictures of the African-American family, uh, maybe one or two, maybe two or three pictures of the African-American family that actually decided that they'd go to the An Anaheim uh, Disneyland Park and get into an all-out brawl, okay? From what I can understand, um, somebody said something and there was a guy who slapped a lady um, and then another man jumped into it and then another woman jumped into it. There was a lady who was in a wheelchair who ended up jumping into it and she ended up on the floor. Well, when she ended up on the floor, 
someone helped pick her back up and they went on about their way. A little ways down the way, they ended up getting into an altercation again. And at, the, at this time, um, they were slapping each other, kicking each other, spitting on each other, all kinds of things were going on. And park goers were looking at this, you know, these people were looking at this and quite naturally, nobody wants to take their child or their children, their even grandparents um, sometimes go to Disneyland and take their children on trips. And you're gonna go and take your children on a trip where you think that your children will be safe. Well, to make a long story short, after they got into altercations with each other more than once, some of the park goers started to um, go in and, and kind of diffuse the, the, the fighting. But to make a long story short, they were escorted out of the park once. <laughs> and, uh, what I wanna know, what I'd like to ask you guys is, what would you do? What would you do if you were at an amusement park with your young children, your young grandchildren, and a family broke out into an all-out brawl? <laughs> what would you do? I mean, I know I wouldn't be trying to stop nobody from doing nothing, and the only reason I wouldn't be trying to stop nobody from doing nothing is because I wouldn't want, um, I wouldn't want park security to think that I was involved even though they can look on the cameras and tell, but if you're already thrown out, what's gonna happen, <laughs> you know? I, I don't think I would, I probably would be looking like what in the world is really going on with these people. But I mean, to make a really, really long story short, you guys, they were brawling. When I tell you they were throwing down, then people were throwing down. Um, considering the fact that it was an African-American couple and I am African-American, I personally think that they need to apologize to the people at the Anaheim Disneyland because that's disgraceful, um, that's disrespectful, and they just need to apologize. Purity point blank in the story, that's what I think they need to do. Go ahead and put in the comments what you think um, they should do. I think they need to apologize or be kicked away from the park forever. I mean, I know that's a bit harsh, but people don't pay good money to go into a music park to have to watch numb knuckles fighting amongst one another because they're too ignorant to get along with one another. That's my take on that one. Okay, so now we have another, you guys, this one. This one right here, baby, I'm telling you, I'll be finding some news, okay? This particular story right here, my second story, uh, is about, uh, a suspect. Uh, the police were looking for a suspect in Missouri and they had looked all over, they had been searching all over the weekend for the suspect in Missouri and a lot of times you know they hit the beat, they go to the areas where they think the suspect is going to be, um, they go to old um, addresses, the address, the last at known address, that type of situation but he had just really been trying to elude the police and had been trying to elude the police uh, for a while. Um, what they wanted him for was be, uh, because he, there was a warrant for his arrest for uh, being in possession of uh, a controlled substance, okay? So, the, like as I said, the Missouri police had uh, watched, had, had been looking for him, had been on watch for him at his last known address, trying to find out where he was all weekend to no avail. So they got a tip um, as to where this man was. And so, <laughs> oh my God. And so they went and um, basically kind of like hid out. And I think at this time, I don't know if they had the dogs with them because the dogs could actually pick up where he was like this. But from what I can understand, he passed gas. And he passed gas so loud. They said he let out, I'm gonna tell you what they said verbatim. They said he let out a huge fart. And at that time, we were able to sniff out and find out where he had been hiding. No. <laughs> you guys, that is absolutely terrible. Your stank butt just passed gas. And just, I mean, he needed to be found anyway. You know, she, 
to some young kids or, or, or selling drugs to adults for that matter, whatever the case may be, the police were able to get him and, and take him into custody and um, get another uh, controlled substance uh, abuser <laughs> uh, um, and put him in jail. Um, that's absolutely terrible though when your farts, you know, uh, put you out there. That, that, that thing right there, that is just, that, that's hilarious. Um, go ahead and put in the comments what you think about that. I just, I mean, when I read that story, I was like, wow, okay. Um, the next one is, is pretty much kind of like on the lines of, this one is funny to, I mean, they're all funny to me with the, with the exception definitely of the one at uh, Disneyland. But this particular one, my third story is really, really funny. Um, um, and it kind of goes along the lines of dummy criminals when uh, criminals do the stupidest things. Well, this one kind of has like a little, you know, a little reverse. Um, there was a uh, correctional officer by the name of Trevor Martineau. And um, he had... Had a conversation with a prisoner and the prisoner had uh, made arrangements with Trevor to um, smuggle some drugs you know smuggle something into the into the jail unfortunately we have correction officers correctional officers that do that we have correctional officers that um, smuggle things into the jail um, we have correctional officers men and women who end up sleeping with the criminals whatever the case may be everybody doesn't take their oath that seriously well this particular um uh, prisoner had indicated to trevor that he wanted some some drugs and you know he wanted him to get him into the jail and this took place in colorado so what trevor did <coughs> is he um came to work one day um he had been employed at this at this place um since last august so um just last first of all you couldn't even make it to a whole year <laughs> you couldn't even make it to a whole year at your job before this happens okay come on come on so what trevor did is um he ended up going to work one day and when he went to work um he stuffed his lunch you know he packed his lunch and put his lunch in the thing now i don't know if you guys know it or not but when people work as correctional um, officers, their things are, are um, their bags and purses and everything, those things are checked, okay? But I mean, he has a burrito, you know? He has a burrito in his lunch bag. You know, not too many people are gonna, I mean, you know, they might lift up the, you know, lift up the sandwich and they might lift up the potato chips, but they're not gonna go completely in it. Well, what ended up happening is one other prisoner found out that another prisoner had made this arrangement with the correctional officer, Trevor Martino, And he actually told one of the investigators, or he snitched. And when he snitched, they were on the lookout. So what ended up happening is Trevor came to work like he had been doing for almost a year. And this particular day, he had a burrito. And he came in, you know, his, did his whole process of work or whatever um, in going into the building. They allowed him to come in. Upon coming in, the investigator asked him if he could search his, um, if he could search his um, belongings. Upon uh, searching the belongings, they did find a burrito in his lunchbox. And he was trying, he was attempting to sneak a burrito into the correctional facility, um, the burrito was wrapped up like a regular, <laughs> y'all, I, I can't, I, I, I tell you no lies. The burrito was wrapped up like a regular burrito, but one end of it was kind of open. So um, usually when you wrap burritos, you know, you have that little, 
<laughs> you have that little circle. That's kind of like a big burrito, but you have the circle because we have like, here in California, we have super burritos. I'm sure they do in Texas too, but in other places as well. So this big burrito and you put the filling and then normally what you would do is you would wrap the center, pull the front, no, you wrap, okay, wait, let me see, let me see burrito and you put your filling. Okay, so you'd wrap the upper part and then you wrap the sides and then you continue to roll. So you got your big burrito, you put your filling in the center, you bring one side up at the bottom, you flap the two sides and then you roll tightly, put your foil on it, boom. Trevor didn't do that. What Trevor decided that he was going to do is he was gonna fill his burrito with all of the drug paraphernalia and things that the actual prisoner had requested. So he puts his 91.4 grams of meth in there. <laughs> oh, I'm not lying. He puts his 21.6 grams of heroin in there. He put 46 uh, strips of, uh, I guess it's uh, subazone. I guess that's like a um, type of, uh, uh, gosh, it's on the tip of my tongue. It's like a pain um, type of thing, but they chew it. They chew it and they can get high off of it. And then he puts 10 strips of the uh, nolazone in there. Okay, so he puts that in there. And then he also puts, um, uh, what is that? It's on the other side. He puts uh, a, uh, he puts also, uh, <laughs> this is just crazy. He also put, he put the strips in there, he put the, the meth in there, he put the heroin, but he also put a, a considerable amount of uh, marijuana wax. And then he, 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 but this one was just dumb. He had a burrito wrap, okay? He puts his stuff in there. And instead of him pulling up the, the bottom, wrapping the two and then rolling it tightly, this fool puts it in the center, uh, wraps it up. And so at one end, <laughs> there was a plastic baggie and when the investigator went to go and look into the um, lunchbox, he discovered a burrito and at the end of the burrito was a plastic baggie stick sticking out and it had all that stuff in it. Okay, all those drugs and everything. Straight up stupid, stupid, stupid. First of all, you don't need to be taking um, uh, drugs into uh, a facility, but you're a correctional officer. I, 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 the, the brain or the lack thereof, I see something on my phone. The brain or the lack thereof of a brain. Okay, so story number four. This one is a, um, and this is a funny story, but it's also very sad. And nothing, um, excuse me, nothing happened um, um, as far as health and anyone's safety. I, I wanted to put that out, but it's a sad story. Um, there was a Dairy Queen uh, employee who took an order, um, actually the manager of the Dairy Queen, this is a Dairy Queen in Georgia. The manager of the Dairy Queen took an order for uh, a customer and the customer re requested that they wanted a Moana, Moana cake. Now, I've seen on Facebook, I've seen, um, I haven't seen it so much on Instagram, but I have seen it on Facebook. I'm sorry, not Instagram, YouTube. But I've seen it on uh, Facebook and I've seen it on Instagram. A lot of people refer to Moana as a Disney princess. She's not. Um, she is not a Disney princess. Ariel is not a Disney princess. Disney princesses are Jasmine, Cinderella, Snow White, those are considered Disney princesses, but Moana is not one, neither is. Um, neither is uh, Moana. Moana is not one, but neither is uh, um, Pocahontas is not a Disney princess. She's not. Um, Tiana is. She's the first black Disney princess. So anyway, this particular employee that worked for Dairy Queen, under the direction of her manager, went ahead 
and did a Moana King, okay? Like I said, this happened in Georgia. Here in California, when you go into Dairy Queens, when you go into um, Baskin Robbins, I don't know if you guys have Baskin Robbins wherever you are, but Baskin Robbins is a ice cream place. It's a place where you can go and get um, uh, dollar scoop ice creams on Tuesdays. And um, it's been around for many, many years. I mean, I don't really want to tell my age, but hey, um, well over 40 years. It's been around a long, long time. I can remember it when I was a little girl. So long story short, um, and Dairy Queen has been around, uh, if not as long, maybe longer. They, they've been around a long time as well. So the customer comes in and the customer wants an order of a Moana birthday cake for their daughter. Their daughter is 25 years old. She has children, but she likes Disney characters. And I had a, friend, a lady that I used to work with who was just like that. She loved going to Disneyland. She had a son, but when she took her vacations and everything, her vacations were for her and her son to Disneyland. So anyway, for those of you that don't know, Moana is not a Disney princess. Moana is a Tongan young lady, a Tongan teenager who actually went on a quest to find her, uh, her, uh, her ethnicity and ancestors. That's who Moana is, okay? So they get this order for a Moana cake in California, Wherever you go, uh, Dairy Queen or Baskin Robbins, when you go, you can go into the store, you can look at the cakes, you can flip through a book, you can go to grocery stores um, and look for cakes. If they don't have copywriting laws, um, you can go and find these cartoon characters, okay, in the actual ice cream place. You can actually find them in a, like a book in the grocery store like our stores like Ray's and Safeway who actually make cakes Costco you can go and flip through books and if they have a Moana they'll have a picture of the Moana they'll have a picture of Mickey Mouse a picture of Barney whoever right so what you can do is if you want it to be blue as opposed to purple or if you want it to be green as opposed to pink whatever well, however you want it. They take the paper, they write down what it is you want, you pay a deposit, same thing happened with this lady. But the problem with the Dairy Queen in Georgia, they don't have books. This particular one did not have books like that. This particular one, what they do when they get requests for cakes, they actually um, go on the internet and look up images. So as I said before, the manager tells the employee, I need you to go up and look up some images the customer wants. This is his cake. It's due on such and such a day. So the young lady says, okay. The employee says, okay. She goes and she gets the images off of, um, off of, off of the internet. Somehow when she did a search for Moana, my little pony came up. Okay. Now this particular customer wanted the cake to be green and white. So somehow this employee decides that she's going to get a marijuana leaf. <laughs> she's going to get a marijuana leaf and a pony. So whoever did this actual photo of the My Little Pony had the My Little Pony looking high and they had a marijuana leaf. So here this lady is making this cake, doing the design and everything. And her boss is looking at her and her boss is not telling her that's not Moana. Her boss was just approving it and told her, yeah, go ahead. This girl went ahead and made the cake. So it was time for the customer to come and get their cake. <laughs> so. When the customer came and got her cake, she said, it's beautiful, but this is not Moana. This is a high My Little Pony. So they went, oh, oh my goodness, I'm so, and that's a marijuana leaf. They was like, oh my goodness, I'm so, the manager playing dumb. 
Oh, and a good lady too. I mean, who don't know what a marijuana leaf look like and a high my little pony. So anyway, they said, oh, we can fix it for you. We are so sorry. We can have it for you and da 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 da. You know, because places like Dairy Queen and, and uh, Baskin Robbins in our case, and even in the grocery stores here that actually make cake, their cakes are frozen, okay? But if you go to Dairy Queen or if you go to Baskin Robbins or another ice cream place, I think there's one called Carvel in, in some states too. I know in Virginia they have that. And Carvel is an ice cream cake place. They make ice cream cakes. The cakes are actually frozen and they just put the sheets of ice cream in there. So it wouldn't be anything for them to do that. And, you know, uh, well, I don't know, because once they decorate it, they put it in the refrigerator, it get, kind of gets, you know, a little firm, you know, so they were like, oh no, we can fix it. And the lady was like, oh no, we're gonna go ahead and take it or whatever, because, you know, she has a birthday party and, you know, we wanna make sure that, we wanna make sure that, um, that, cake is there so I'll also put a picture of the cake on the side <laughs> y'all this is a hot mess a picture of the cake on the side of the video too so you can see the cake because anybody who don't know that Moana is this big she, she's not even big but Moana is this really pretty tongue girl with really thick hair really big eyes you know who doesn't know that you put a high My Little Pony and a big old green marijuana a leaf so the boss approved it right the manager approved it so what happened is once the um, upper management people from Dairy Queen seen all the negative publicity because what happened is the young lady put it on uh, uh, she put it on um, she put it on Twitter and they got you know, Twitter has news companies, you know, news companies go on there a lot of times to find their news leads and things like that. And so they found that. So what they did is they invited the young lady to um, come on the news station. Well, she didn't want to go on the news station because she didn't want to lose her job. Well, she ended up losing her job anyway. Prior to her even going on the station, they ended up firing her because all of the, neg the negative feedback that they were getting from the lady posting the cake, um, on um, Twitter as being the wrong cake, a high My Little Pony, and the marijuana leaf. They ended up firing her, but what they should have did is they should have fired the manager because the manager has the final approval before you go and put the cake, the images, all that together. She went to the front with the lady to, re to, to show the people the cake. She approved the images. She should have been fired, not she should have been fired because a manager has more of a responsibility to the customer than the actual employee does because they're the ones who actually keep the store going. Now that's just my opinion. And she approved the, the images with the girl. It was almost like to me that she knew that they weren't the right images. She, she stood over the girl as the girl decorated the cake, but she never corrected her. So I feel like the manager should have been the one to get fired, but the girl ended, ended up losing her job. This is a single mother with um, two children. She has a car that needed um, some work done. She had um, some bills that were behind and she ended up losing her job. Um, USA, I, I think it was uh, USA Today, um, had her come on their, uh, their TV show and she talked to them or US Today, one of them, and she talked to them. And as a result of that, they gave her job back. But because of the humiliation of losing her job and the fact that they didn't fire the manager, she felt like, no, I'm not gonna take it back because I might find myself in another situation like that. But if you're on the TV talking about, you got two kids, you're a single parent, and you have a car that needs to be uh, worked on, what I would have done was taken my job back. Uh, but in the process of it, looking for another another job. But that right there, that was really, really, really crazy. I'm telling y'all, I'll be coming with some little crazy stuff. Um, uh, is that the last one? No. 
No, that's not the last one. I'll be coming with some more crazy stuff. Um, yeah, it was uh, for these people. So, in addition to that, uh, if you haven't heard, uh, Mr. R. Kelly uh, uh, is, has been um, the New York, uh, I believe it's uh, the New York uh, courts are requesting that he uh, be arrested. Uh, they want to try him for um, the situation with the young girls and I believe, I mean, you know, he was um, able to uh, get away with um, the situation where he had the women living with him. He was able to get away many years ago with urinating on the girl or I, allegedly, because I wasn't there, uh, urinating on the girl or whatever the case may be. Um, but, and he was able to pay his back um, taxes, I'm not his back taxes, but his back uh, child support. Um, I don't know if he's going to be able to get out of this one. I, I just really don't. But you guys, that's it for Carol's wacky news and, 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 and things like that. I hope that you guys find this enjoyable. I, I find it so ironic when I find these stories. I'd be like, are you serious? But I think out of all of those, I think the one that really, really got me the most was not Disneyland. The one that got me the most was a man who let, he quote unquote, let out a large fart and they was able to rock and not. Well, please like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to click on the bell to be reminded of each and every video that I upload. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please tell your mama, your brother, your sister, your friend, your cousin, your in-laws, and everybody, come on over to Carol's Daily Sauce and uh, subscribe to my channel. If... <laughs>